Another factor that we have to assess would yes. be the percentage of tropican that the bird consumes. Yes. It's mm -hmm. very important to distinguish between what is offered and what is consumed. And this is, I think, where most people uh, do the ostrich. They put their head in the sand and they are trying to be the perfect caretakers. They're offering a lot of tropican, but they're not always assessing how much tropican is being eaten. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be discussing that in several podcasts that are following this one. And so we definitely in invite you to join us with these as we will be discussing the 70% ideal goal that we're trying to reach with our companion birds, right? right. Uh, but if, if the bird uh, is not consuming at least 70%, then we definitely recommend that these birds be kept on a high-performance formula of tropican. So another um, factor that we should mm -hmm. assess would be the caloric requirements. Yes. And this sort of ties into all the other factors, right? All of the other factors we're discussing are all definitely linked together and mm -hmm. will then contribute to evaluate the caloric requirements. Very important now, caloric requirements are for every individual bird in your care may be slightly different. Mm -hmm. It's not a species requirement only, it's also for every individual bird. Right. Now, Melanie discussed the perch potato right. versus perhaps a bird that's flying around at bush gardens or a companion bird that's exercising a lot, mm -hmm. that's being harness flighted, mm -hmm. that is actually doing a lot of laddering and, and perhaps climbing on ropes and foraging. It's very different from in one individual bird to another. Now, it's important to mention as well for caloric requirements that our Tropican formula was designed so that it can offer with a minimal amount uh, optimal caloric needs to mm -hmm. our birds. And Melanie will be discussing this and showing you how to measure out our tropican and how to evaluate what quantities are needed to reach the caloric requirements they need. Now, additional to this, and completely in link with this, and we've discussed this prior, is the activity level of our birds. Right. And, and this is one that requires truthfulness from the caretaker. Mm -hmm. It's quite the same as when we are dealing with our, some of our children. Absolutely. We'd like to believe that they have a higher energy uh, yes. activity level than we think they do. Yes. And often caretakers uh, feel bad that perhaps their birds are not spending that much time actually doing physical activity. Mm -hmm. A lot of caretakers are quick to say that, no, my bird is out of the cage all the time. But it doesn't mean that if he's perching on top of his plate gym or if he's perching inside his cage that he's actually spending more energy exactly. and activity. And, and this is really important because we try and educate caretakers to evaluate health and weight monitoring and everything else by palpating the muscle mm -hmm. on the breastbones, around the breastbones. And this is very important if you practice yourself and do it routinely and, and your bird starts to fly on a harness or starts mm -hmm. to do more physical activity, then you might even be able to um, make a dis difference between the fat mm -hmm. and the muscle mass. And, and, and this combined is, is what we call a body score. Yes. And when you are consulting with your avian veterinarian on a yearly basis, your veterinarian will be able to help you assess the body score of your bird. And, and this will be for you uh, a gauge to be able to combine that with all the other factors we're discussing mm -hmm. to then be able to evaluate whether your bird should be kept on a lifetime or high performance formula throughout the year. So let's talk about weight management right now. That's our favorite topic. Mm -hmm. We love to weigh our birds and it's essential that every caretaker weighs their bird. Your pet status file is a good place to uh, attach a, uh, you know, a, a database of all the weights that you've been keeping for the past year, for the past two years, ideally on a weekly basis. Right. But if your companion has a routine, steps out of his sleeping cage in the morning, steps onto a scale and back into his day cage, then it is such an easy thing. Every caretaker needs to know their weight by heart of their birds. Mm -hmm. Of course, if we're breeders, we mentioned before with Melanie, we won't know every individual weight by heart, but right. this is something we can keep in files. This will help your veterinarian and avian care specialist evaluate whether this bird should be kept on lifetime or converted back to high performance. Mm -hmm. uh, some birds will require a little bit more fat and a little bit more protein. And if you're not doing this routinely, then you will not be able to highlight the slight uh, weight gain mm -hmm. that is starting to occur. Mm -hmm. And then a year down the road when you're visiting again your avian veterinarian for consultation, well the weight has already been gained mm -hmm. and it takes forever to get weight off. We all know that for ourselves. And for our companion birds in captivity is even more of a challenge. Mm -hmm. And like you had mentioned previously, 
body score is also important. Very important. Weight is a tool for management, but it must be assessed for every individual bird. Mm -hmm. Should not be only reflective of the species. Mm -hmm. We have to keep in mind there's large some individuals, individuals are large. Yes. Some of them have more muscle mass yes. as well. When our birds come in from our outdoor flight, we're obviously, you know, they're getting a lot more flight and activity and, and spending a lot more energy, then they have more muscle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the weight is the same, but it's a little bit shifted now from yeah. being fat mass to now muscle mass. So we need to make sure that we're evaluating this as well with our avian specialist. Well, let's talk about species predispositions. Um, we are going to touch on this a little bit more yes. in an upcoming podcast. Yes, especially when we're talking about uh, recommendations of percentage of tropican offered for different species of birds. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be making a distinction between the smaller psittacines, right? Right. Which right. definitely don't have the same uh, percentage of tropican consumed as the larger parrots. Um, we did mention with Melanie uh, the common species that tend to suffer from obesity. Mm -hmm. The Amazons, the Quakers, uh, some of the Pionis species. We didn't mention the Galas though. We didn't mention the Galas and I, I, that's a little bit of my fault I guess because mm -hmm. we're in Quebec and we don't see a lot of Galas. The rose-breasted cockatoos in captivity, they're very, very expensive and they're difficult to breed in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are definitely worldwide known as being a species that is challenged with obesity. And for this particular species, uh, even offering a formulated diet uh, must be done with extreme caution. Uh, these birds are definitely prone to chronic and morbid obesity. Um, but other species, uh, as we mentioned before, the smaller psittacines, the Australian parakeets, uh, and uh, can benefit from tropical lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our larger and greater macaws and cockatoos uh, that don't tend to suffer from the same obesity issues as the Amazon species and the smaller uh, parrot species, then can benefit from a higher percentage of high performance. high performance. And this is why also our high performance biscuits usually are favored by some of these larger species of citizens.